When we had uh, we had planned that Bishop Coleman would be here, but because of the weekend, we were not able to find a hotel for him to stay uh, for the weekend, so he was not able to come. And we said, well, is there a ram in the bush? And we looked to Pastor Vera, and we looked at each other, and unanimously, everybody said, Prophet Asia. Praise the Lord. And so we thank God. Amen. This, this man has been a brother to me. He's a blessing to the body of Christ. And we ask that you just point your hand to him right now. And say, Lord, have your way. Strengthen this man of God. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Receive him as he comes. Clap your hands. Come on, clap your hands all over this place. Of Nak there. 
The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, the Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea along the bank of the Jordan. Then Caleb, somebody shout Caleb. Caleb. Uh -huh. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up and at, and at once and possess the land. For we are well able to overcome it. Somebody shout, well able to overcome it. I, I want to speak from the thought, let us go up. Let us go up. Can you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you've been down too long. Oh, come on, say it like you got the Holy Ghost. It's time to go up. Come on, clap your hands all over this place. Spirit of the living God, we pray right now, God, that you work my mouth. God, that you speak and do not let me speak. God, hide me behind the cross. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I like that key, C sharp. Amen. Um, we here, if we can hang out in Numbers chapter 13 and 14 just for a little while, I'm going to give you some information here. Let me bring you up to speed on what's going on in the text. Here in chapter 13, what happens before these verses is that God is telling Moses, he says, uh, Moses, I, I need you to explore the land, so I need you to send 12 men, one from each tribe. Amen? These people went up to explore the land and what happened was they picked the fruit uh, from the land to bring back to show how great the land was. After 40 days of um, uh, spying out the land, what 40 represents is the time of testing and coming out. And and um, they they were here in in this land for 40 days and they gathered Moses at the assembly and 10 out of 12 men reported yes, they all were in agreement that yes, the land is good, yes, the land is flowing with milk and honey, yes, the land is all of that, but, but, the people that has inhabited the land, they are giants, they are too big for, for us. So what happens is, I know you're listening, that the descendants of Nat, what they were is they derived from giants. Amen? Can you say amen? Um, so what he says in a text, he said, we surely can't go up against these people because we look like grasshoppers compared to the giants. Can you get with me this morning? And so uh, I, I'm going to take you forward. I'm going to take you on a journey this morning as we explore the text. The first thing that I want to do is I, I want to put a pause in, in Numbers chapter 13 and I want to jump to Numbers 14 and, and give you some information there and then work my way to 13. Amen? So all of, this is Numbers 14, 1 through 4, so all uh, the congregation lifted their voices and cried. This is after they received the bad report. And the people wept that night and all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron. And the whole congregation said to them, if only we had died in the land of Egypt or if only we had died in the wilderness. Why has the Lord brought us into the land to fall by the sword that our wives and children should become victims would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? So, so they said to one another, let us select a leader and return to Egypt. You know that I'm a point preacher, so the po first point that I want to give you this morning is you can't look, you can't move forward if you're looking back. Can you look at somebody and say you can't move forward? And you, and come on, come on, talk to your neighbor. You can't move forward if you're looking back. You can't, you can't move forward. 
forward if you're looking back. What happened was they were in bondage so long. They were enslaved so Y'all gonna make me preach, that's all right. They were enslaved so long. They were in bondage so long that they had an Egypt mentality. What is an Egypt mentality? The Egypt mentality is the mentality of slavery. The Egypt mentality is the, the mentality of bondage. So these people in their mind, they were still enslaved. Uh, is that all what it looks like today? Oh, come on, because I know it's in the room that they, oh, I might as well go back to the things I used to do. I, I might as well go back to the old mindsets. I, I might as well go back to what I used to say. Come on, somebody. Are y'all going to help me this morning or are you just going to give me the church face? Uh, but God, God, these people, they begin to rebel against Moses and they begin to look back. And I don't know about you, but if I back, I cannot effectively move forward. So what these people begin to do is they begin to slow walk into their destiny. Oh, but I heard a scripture in the New Testament that Paul said, he said, forgetting those things which are behind me and pressing for the things which are in front of me. This morning, we got a lot of people in the room this morning who are slow walking into their destiny because they continue to look back. But I'm telling you this morning that if you continue to move back, you're not moving into your promise. You're not moving into your destiny. You gotta drop the dead weight. You gotta, oh, y'all gonna make me preach. You gotta drop those things that, that, are, that are in your past because your past has passed. That's the reason why it's in the past in the first place. You can't hold
to make here is in Numbers 13, 28. He said, nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong and the cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Nak there. The, 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 the thing I want to tell you here to point out in the text is you have to listen to the right people. As you see here that the majority of the people said no. The people are too strong. They, they can't come on somebody. A lot of times when God is trying to do something in your life and God, and God has promised in your life, it's not meant for everybody to see. But most of the time, there's going to be 99 people who's against it and maybe God has put it in that tool to come on somebody to push you along to your destiny you gotta listen to the right folks you gotta discern in the spirit you I, I don't mean to offend anybody or, or step on any toes this morning but I'm telling the truth is that most people can't see or perceive what God is doing in your life come on somebody and it's the same here in the text. You can't listen to faithless people. I'm going to say it again. You can't listen to people who have no faith because you can't afford to be surrounded by people who only see opposition but fail to see opportunity. I'm going to say it again. You can't afford to be surrounded by people who only see opposition but fail to see opportunity. What is opportunity? Opportunity for God to show himself strong in my life. Opportunity for God to show me his promise. Opportunity for God to expand me. Opportunity for God to promote me. Opportunity for God to take me higher. Opportunity for God to shift me. Opportunity for opportunity for God to overtake me. I am looking for opportunity. I don't care the opposition because if God gave me a promise in him, the promises are yes and amen. I, do I got anybody in here that are holding on to some promises that God has given you and it seems like everybody else can't see what God is doing in your life? Stop focusing. 
focusing on the negative. Stop focusing on the, come on somebody, the naysayers. But I need you to focus on the fact that you gotta step out. Take me back to see sharp. Say there, because 
appetizers, serve you some appetizers. So you can't look at someone's past and judge them and say God can't do it in your life because of what you did. Because we all did something. But my God lets me know that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of the Lord. So we all have done something. And stop lying, stop lying when y'all witnessing the folks. And say, oh, I just hated sin. And I didn't know you did it. That's why you did it for so long. You didn't hate it. That's why sometimes you do a about face and go back to it. When I read the scripture, the first time I heard the scripture was from, uh, from Elder Dell, is that the, the, in John 15 it says, You did not choose me, but I chose you. That's the reason why God picked you up and cleaned you up to use you for His glory. Oh no, my, oh no, you didn't suddenly have a wake up call, but God said that, oh, He looked at you and said, Oh, 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 yeah, she got a mouth, I can use. Promiscuous, she oh she's seductive, but I can use that for her to be an evangelist. I, I just need to sanctify her. So y'all sit down so we can go in the house. So y'all make me preach. I'm about to take off this jacket. I'm trying to be cute. When I holler, I'm not on the jack, I'm just playing. Oh, y'all can laugh, it's all right. So, so, here, yeah, I got to go. Here, we are to our third point, and the third point is you gotta trust God in the transition. You gotta, you gotta trust God in the transition. You have, let me say that again, you have to trust God in the transition. Transition is one of the hardest things we face. Uh -huh. Transitions, transitional seasons bring about many frustrations. Come on, somebody. Chances are, if you are frustrated, you might in transition. If, if it's not a physical transition, uh, most of the time it's a spiritual transition. God is trying to shift you from one place to uh, another place. It, uh, yeah, you said frustrated. Are we 